And uh, we are here with Ely Mayor Nathan Robertson. And uh, it has been a uh, kind of a sad weekend, though it's kind of status quo, uh, with the announcement of the, uh, the parents of the infant child uh, now having tested. Uh, they were presumptively positive before. Now they've actually tested positive. So we actually have three cases, but they're all in one household. Right. And the thing to remember... Um about those orders is if there's one individual in the household who's being quarantined for that, everybody in the house is being quarantined for that. So they haven't been in the community at all anyway. They haven't been in the community at all anyway. Um, but the hospital was doing a follow-up test uh, with the infant, uh, as I understand it. Then they tested uh, the parents to confirm whether or not they had it. Um, as I understand from Matt Walker, they're, the parents aren't exhibiting any symptoms, but um, they are they do they do have it and so they're going to be monitored and and the the hospital staff and our county health officer are just doing a fantastic job staying on top of um making sure these people are taken well care of nobody's hospitalized which i think is good yes um and our, our and i guess the infant's doing well too yeah the infant's not hospitalized either um so just kind of kind of like having the flu yeah well you know we we work our way through this <laughs> yep we, we got a ridiculous uh, comment, but I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, a lot of what we have been told uh, has been just kind of really weird. Um, that the rurals, uh, by and large, with the exception of Humboldt County, uh, have come away from this so far really, really well. You know, Humboldt County's up to 20 cases. Yeah, Humboldt uh, County kind of got hit hard there, uh, and, and we have been. Um, the hospital this morning put out they've done 85 cases, still just the three positive. Um, they don't have an unlimited number of tests that they can just test anybody who comes in and wants one, but uh, everybody they've tested so far, with the exception of those three people that caught it due to travel, um, have tested negative, which I think is a good thing. It is. Um, but there is, and, and I, I, looking at this, it has to come from a metro area, this comment that, that, that popped up. And I want you to hear this at least, mm -hmm. if you didn't see it on the, because uh, you know I put all of our, uh, uh, all of our conversations up to YouTube. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. And uh, here's the comment, and I'm not sure who made it. Uh, it's an anonymous comment, but I, I want to read it because it absolutely makes no sense to me. Uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> Ely PD, Ely Fire, Ely Hospital, Ely State Prison. With hundreds and hundreds of first responders, how does a ghost town take care of their livelihood when population is next to zero? Throw in McGill, Ruth, Lund, still looking at a population next to zero. Yet with hundreds upon hundreds of first responders, got to be a way to double, triple their salaries with one-way ticket to hotspot. The great spirit of the people of this zero population land can't band together to protect one another while all first responders head out to help save America. My comment would have made sense way back during the 19th century, not today with every man for himself. Now, that... I'm not sure his comment makes sense today. I, it, it doesn't to me either, <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and it strikes me as being something that somebody from one of the metros would have said is he asking if our local professionals would go to one of these hot areas to to help is that i i, I can't figure it out and maybe mm. the person will listen to this and and try to make Clarify. their make their comment a little more sensical but uh, as opposed to nonsensical mm -hmm. but the the point remains we are going to have severe economic damage from this. And how do we continue to support our government, our police and fire, and our prison workers, even though that's paid by the state, but still the state's, you know, going to hit get harder than anybody. Mm -hmm. How do we continue to support those people? Well, and it's... Um the, uh, I, that's the, nice, the only sense I can make out of sure. the question. The, I guess the only nice thing about the situation we're in right now, and you're absolutely right that um, there, there is nobody, no entity that comes out of this unscathed as far as the economic impact. 
um, the the government impact on this is a little bit delayed because you know just the nature of how things work we're we're working off tax funds that were collected you know a month or two ago um, so there's some time to respond to that and and we just we won't know exactly what the impact is until until it happens not to say that we're not doing our best to to um, prepare for that but um, we aren't hit as hard here as some of the other places are uh, Wendover where almost all of the people who live there work in casinos and hotels yeah um, 80 they, 80 percent of the sure. community is idle right which is which is which is um, a drastic thing here where we have the mine and the prison and other essential things that are running um, well, luckily there's still quite a few people in our community that are still getting a paycheck and at work which is great um, not that there aren't people who aren't suffering from this, but um, I, I suppose we could have been hit a lot worse. Well, and and we don't know. Still, Mike. We don't. Yeah, um, we're all kind of in free fall, waiting to see where the bottom is. But um, it, it's you know we just chug along and, and keep doing what we're doing. Um, you know we're not epidemiologists. We're not these people who who are at the in in, in the midst of this. But quite frankly, uh, we are seeing some slowing, and yet over the weekend, now we're at 114 deaths yeah, across the state. That. And you realize last weekend we were coming out with 40? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely it, it, it explodes exponentially. Mm -hmm. um, that's just how viruses seem to work. Um, and, and we just have to stick to our guns and keep doing what we're doing. I mean, there are, if you are one of those people who have been severely financially impacted now, um, please go look up these programs that they're pushing out on the state and federal levels. Um, call your lender, call your landlord, call your credit card company. Everybody has set up some kind of program or protocol to help and, and make use of those. Please make use of those. Um, this is going to hurt everybody to some extent or another, but don't sit there and let it hurt you more than it has to. No, no. Take it, you know, get it done now because uh, uh, tomorrow it'll just be one more day that the pain is there. I'm talking with some of our uh, small business administration representatives and um, our congressional de delegation, I think uh, one great thing, uh, piece of news for our community is those PPP loans, those payroll protection program loans um the the only ones that have been funded are here in ely from our, our our local first national bank at the moment was the last information i heard and they've been working round the clock to make sure that this stuff gets done and submitted and out to uh, the people in our community so just my hats off to everybody working on this problem and especially in our community where they've they're just attacking it like rabid dogs and and doing the best they can to make sure that um their customers and the, our community members are taken care of Maybe it's the fact that the uh, bigger banks just aren't really interested. And that might be the case, too. But um, regardless, we're, we're really appreciative of, of the local expertise we have. And, and uh, for the people who are taking the chance to apply for these loans and, and for our local institutions for processing them. Now, I noticed one of the things that was in this press release over the weekend uh, by uh, Dr. Byun. Mm -hmm. is that people should, uh, if they travel out of state, they should self-isolate. I also noticed that something that was in there that actually made a lot of sense to me is that if you travel to Washoe or to, um, uh, to Clark County, you should self-isolate as well. Well, and the, the travel advisory from the governor and a lot of the ones instituted just as company policy from some of our local... Uh, bigger entities or if you're traveling to an area that has confirmed cases if you come back you have to self-isolate um, of course on the state level it's a travel advisory no one's gonna make you do that um, but it is encouraged and we should be canceling all non-essential travel if you don't have to go put it off for a few weeks I, I, I noticed also that um, and what I was gonna say just flew out my mind <laughs> but it, 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 you know, when we look at the only rural county to get hit hard is Humboldt. And we are doing well and we are trying. But, you know, people, you know, we well, still have... Well, in those have, cases in Humboldt came out of a family gathering. Yes. 
you know, I we're, we're kind of past it now, um, Easter, and I, I hope everybody did their best to stay at home. Uh, my extended family all got on a Zoom conference to spend a little time on Easter together, and that was a little hectic, but it was nice to see everybody. Be careful with Zoom. Right. It, it, no, because the, uh, one of our business colleagues did Zoom mm-hmm. and got hacked bad. Did they? So, yeah. Well, if anybody Be very careful with if it. anybody wants into the Robertson family Zoom conference bad enough, I suppose they get what they deserve. <laughs> well, well, no, it wasn't that. Is that they started getting into the computers oh, of the I people, you. and that uh, sure. yeah. So be careful with that. But um, we are just we we continue to do what we can do, uh, and oh, that's what I was going to say. We want to emphasize to people again. The borders are open. Those rumors are running around again. The borders are not closed between California and Nevada. Mm -hmm. The borders are not closed between Nevada and Utah. Now, what does happen when you cross over the border into Utah is you will get a text on your phone with a link for a form to fill out. The state of Utah says they're not stopping people, but they're asking all travelers into their state to comply with their rules and regulations. And one of these rules and regulations at the moment is that you fill out this questionnaire. Well, all, all I will say is that is a state that elected Mitt Romney. I won't say any more about that. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we have to be logical. If you need to go to Utah, go to Utah. If you need to go to California, go to California. God knows why you'd want to, but go to California. But, you know, on essential business, not non-essential stuff. If you can put it off for a few weeks, you'd probably be best to put it off for a few weeks. Yeah, we'll roll through this. Um, I saw a photo of you as checker. Oh, and, the, the Nevada and, Independent and, article. And, 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 your line, <laughs> and your line wasn't that long. No, no. And this morning, I'll, I'll be honest, it was probably 30 minutes before I had anybody come through my checkout stand. It was a bit slower this morning. Everybody was recovering from their, their Easter weekend, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, we... Whatever they did to get through their Easter weekend at home alone. Yeah, you know, we did our part. Ministerial Association provided us a nice Easter program. That's great. And, you know, we we helped everybody here deal with their uh, Easter stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do what we can do. That's great. Um, I hope you had a lot of people tune in for that. I I, I hope so, too. You know, we, we, we do what we can do. Um, and uh, we are starting to get support from businesses so we can support them, and uh, we will see what we can do to help everybody get through this. Any excitement, anything uh, that uh, you need to pass along to us today? Um, No, this week's looking pretty slow, and I'm sure if you're stuck at home, it's looking pretty slow for any of your listeners too. So, Yeah, I don't get stuck at home. No. You just get stuck here. Yeah, I, I'm. It's like I'm always here, you know, all the time. Uh, but at least, you know, the good part is that on this side of the state, the Earth's not moving. That that's true too. I mean, I was watching those numbers, and I get those alerts, uh, and I saw the first earthquake alert come out uh, before the earthquake struck, mm-hmm. and then I, it's been like two, three, four aftershocks an hour ever since. You know, none of them have been huge, but I mean the simple fact that you keep seeing these aftershocks, in and it's not the size, it's the quantity. Right. And it makes you a little nervous. Maybe, maybe we're going to finally have that slide that we were thinking we were going to have for years. You know, where where California self isolates itself into the ocean. Right into the ocean. Right Who knows? Into the ocean. Who knows? <laughs> We'll see. Mayor Nathan Robertson with our uh, daily visit. We'll talk to him tomorrow at this same time here. I'll be on here. On the Nevada Talk Network. A reminder, we will have the president on a little later and see what uh, uh, what new things we have to talk about today. Thanks for tuning into the Nevada Talk Network. We'll be back. J.D. will be back in a moment.